Now, a similar uh, principle, if you wish, namely reuse of the same kind of building block, but in, in environments that don't have uh, a simple symmetry is exemplified by the adenoviruses. These are even much larger um, structures, and I will try to make a few points by talking about the adenovirus structure. The particle has a strikingly icosahedral shape with fibers coming out of the fivefold positions that are responsible for cell attachment. The main part of the coat is represented by a protein called hexon because it forms these sorts of hexagonally packed arrays. But in fact, the hexon is not a hexamer, it's a trimer. It's a trimer, however, with two of these beta jelly roll domains rather similar in their overall shape, next to each other, so it has a kind of hexagonal outline. As a result, the face of the icosahedron does have threefold symmetry, and the whole structure has threefold symmetry, but the hexon itself actually uh, is a threefold, is only a threefold and not a sixfold symmetric entity. Now, one quite interesting aspect of the, uh, the structure here is that there is a bacteriophage called PRD1, and indeed several other bacteriophages now known, that has essentially exactly the same design. Adenoviruses are viruses of humans and vertebrates and actually a large number of other animal species. So that, that with this structure, one can make the point that even uh, viruses of bacteria have strong resemblances in their design to um, those of, of humans and, and, um, and, and plants for that matter. Indeed, you saw a similarity between the plant viruses, like tomato bushy stunt virus, and the, um, the picornaviruses, such as polio and the human common cold virus. This doesn't mean, in my own view, that these viruses are so ancient, if you wish, in their design, in their, in their structure, that they antedated the divergence of bacteria and animals, or animals and plants. Rather, we know that viruses can jump species. They can jump from insects, indeed they're viruses that infect both insects and people and they are viruses that infect both insects and plants. And so the transfer of genetic information that I alluded to at the very beginning of the talk, the notion that a virus particle is a package that gets genetic material from one kind of cell to another, may well be true not just for the cells within you or between you and another individual of the same species, but across species. We know that flu jumps from swine to people, as we all learned from the 2009 pandemic, or from birds to people, but also ultimately through eons of time from one kingdom to another. At any rate, it does mean that the structures we're talking about show a striking similarity and a striking unity, whatever the evolutionary details. In the case of the adenoviruses, the subunit on the five-fold axis is um, a different protein subunit from the hexon. It's got one beta jelly roll domain instead of two, so that, again, there's a kind of duplication and elaboration as this structure uh, develops into a much larger shell to package, in this case, a 35 kilobase pair double-strand DNA genome, much, much larger genome. And indeed, there are viruses based on very similar kinds of protein subunits, the same double jelly roll structure with a separate related but genetically and chemically distinct single jelly roll pentamer on the five-fold axes. There are um, much even much larger viruses based on 
this kind of subunit. Now, an interesting um, point in relating the adenovirus structure to the bacteriophage that I mentioned is based on a similar kind of, or um, has a similar kind of major outer shell subunit, is the mechanism, or are the mechanisms, by which the virus uh, forms a defined and specific structure. As you can imagine, in this sort of structure, how in the course of assembly is the relationship between one fivefold position and another fivefold position determined? How is the size of this structure determined rather than, than uh, allowing, let us say, multiple hexons to start forming much bigger and bigger triangles? In the case of the phage, the, um, the answer is particularly simple. When stripped off the outer shell of hexon-like subunits and penton-like subunits and discovered that from the X-ray crystal structure of this particle that there is an extended protein called a tape measure protein by the investigators who discovered this that in effect uh, stretches from a five-fold position here to a two-fold position here and then meets another one, two-fold symmetric, to the next five-fold. And that organization, think of the scaffolds that we were talking about before, governs the fixed size of the particle. In this case, the scaffold protein is not an arm of the same protein subunit. It's a separate protein but the same principle applies. And likewise, in the uh, adenovirus particle, there are several different so-called glue or cement proteins that form, in effect, a scaffold that knits together the structure in a way that leaves, the, um, uh, leaves no ambiguity for the, the, uh, the size and, uh, and characteristic of the final particle. 